Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Let's explain Konami realizing trap issue. Alrighty then, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the trap issue that Konami real has realized in Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'll go into a bit of detail and just explain how I feel Konami has realized this issue, why, they, why they've discovered that traps are not being used, and the methods and the cards they have released over time to try and combat the failing trap issue in Yu-Gi-Oh! at present. With that being said, let's get on with the rest of the video. So, before we talk about, as you can see in front of you, why traps have just vanished, first we have to go back to the beginning, back to when Yu-Gi-Oh! first started. When Yu-Gi-Oh! first premiered in 2002 in TCG, and OCG it was 1996, but anyways, traps had a prevalent use in Yu-Gi-Oh! They were so useful, in fact, a lot of prize cards and a lot of key cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! A lot of expensive cards were traps. Facts. And it was during the Synchro era we also used traps and as well in the Fusion era. But what happened during the XYZ era? Well, we still had usage of traps as the Solemn Brigade was, was issued. These were traps which were all called Solemn. It was when we reached the Pendulum era that we started to have a bit of problems, as the trap usage started to go down massively. You are absolutely right. And the only car, the only traps that were used at this point in time were only Solemns. While yes, we did have other traps that were being used, possibly floodgates, but the reduction of traps here was significant, but I don't think it was a really big deal at the time. And Konami had been, obviously, this was the point in time where Konami was releasing a lot of really good spells, and the spell uh, power of Yu-Gi-Oh! had increased exponentially. But anyways, with a card like Typhoon, uh, which, was the one of the, which was the first card that Konami had printed, being a trap that you could activate in hand, Mind you, it does have stipulations, as you can see here. It was a step for Konami seeing a way forward for traps. As they had powered up spells, they powered up traps as well with the introduction of Typhoon. And so they looked at this and saw like, yes, um, this is going to be good. Traps are going to keep up with spells and it, was, and it was going to usher in a new age. But what happened? Typhoon fell by the wayside and did not catch on in the competitive scene. In fact, it is one of the worst uh, hand, first hand traps, that's an actual trap, that failed on a colossal level. Believe it! Now, why did this card fail? Uh, potentially, it came out also the same time as Twin Twister came out and other back row removal came out. But it doesn't make any sense Right? Why this card failed? We still had cards like Imperial Order that could negate spells. There were plenty of cards like Vanity's Emptiness. Plenty of Floodgate cards existed in the game that were traps. And plenty of these Floodgate cards could deal with spells. And Typhoon was, a, we could say, a breath of fresh air that Konami had printed to deal with these problematic cards that you could activate easily in your hand with Typhoon. So why did this not succeed? And I think this is something that definitely baffles Konami to this day. But it was in this that they realized that things needed to change. And so when we enter the Link era, they had begun to notice that traps and their usage had basically gone. At least in the Pendulum era, um, Solemns were used, but now not even any kind of trap card was used. And it was a really dire, dire straits. In fact, the usage of traps had fallen off so much that I don't even know, were Solemns used unless the card was related to the archetype itself, just the general use of traps was completely abandoned. It was only with the introduction of infinite impermanence 
did they did they think maybe they should make a, a trap like a hand trap like effect veiler for example make that into a trap and make it so you can activate it from the hand was a stroke of genius as this was a way to implement the color mechanic into the game and, and other things and to this day infinite impermanence is the best introduction to the color mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! no other card has come close to introducing a new playing mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! unlike infinite impermanence you i can't deny that it's just the truth at this point yes you can you can say that mech knights were there but since its inception and since its release, Infinite Impermanence has always been a competitive staple. And so it goes to show that traps were useful. So what happened later? Indeed, what happened later? You see, Konami had actually discovered an issue. Outside of just Infinite Impermanence, Traps were no longer used in the Link era as of 2015. Just the general usage of traps had dwindled. And so they released another, a board-breaking card like Evenly Matched, which, yes, was really good, and yes, would uh, promote the use of the, that card in particular, but it didn't save the issue of traps as a whole just completely vanishing from the playing scene. What was going on? Konami basically knew that they had made spells completely busted and they were trying their best to find a way. But Evenly Matched gave them a clue. It gave them something and a way to find the process forward, finding the way, right, to revive traps again. So, Evenly Matched worked. Why did it work as a hand trap? As they had uh, gathered details and data, they had noticed that Evenly Matched worked was because it was able, it was a card that was able to go going second and was able to do a lot of things for the losing player going forward. So, the theory would go, surely, if we made a normal trap with the abilities of Evenly Matched, then surely this would also be mass adopted into the competitive scene. In theory, it looks all right. And with this thought process in mind, we go to the next slide. As we can see the card that was released in 2023, known as Waybridge. For all intents and purposes, Waybridge is evenly matched, but just acting as a normal trap. A true, like its activation conditions, Say you need to control two or more monsters than that my your opponent does, but for all intents and purposes, this is evenly matched. Yet when this card released, no one played it. In fact, this is a trap that just failed on release, failed to gather attention, and failed on all fronts to put traps back onto the map. And again, Konami was back turning their hands on their heads. What was going on with traps? They had clearly seen that with the usage of Evenly Matched, that card was everywhere. And so the, the idea was if you made cards similar to Evenly Matched, they would automatically get play. Yet Waybridge is a good card. It is not a bad card at all. And on end, with following the, the trajectory of Evenly Matched and Imperm, this is a card that helps in going second. So what went wrong here? And I think it is, it is the introduction of Waybridge that really showcases that Konami didn't, doesn't know what to do with traps anymore. It really did show that they had seen the really significant problem with traps as a whole in Yu-Gi-Oh now and in the in the in the gaming landscape of where Yu-Gi-Oh is traps just had just no usage at all and even if they had the power level of evenly matched unless they act unless they didn't function as actual traps then their usage was completely null and void and this is a severe problem. 
Now, say what you want about spells and the other things that have happened in Yu-Gi-Oh! But Konami over the years has released tons of traps in tons in sets. These car these traps have been significantly great. But again, whether it's OCG or TCG, these traps get ignored. Some of them have a very um interesting effects. For example, like broken line. Again, a fantastic effect similar to we're talking imperm, right? Again, using the column mechanic, being able to negate cards in a column. Again, following the success of Imperm, you would think a card like Broken Line, which is the counter trap, which negates card in a column, because Imperm does the same thing. Again, it just does, it fails to succeed. What was going wrong here? And this perfectly illustrates that Konami was having issues reintegrating traps into Yu-Gi-Oh! And they did see that there is a problem. And if you look at 2017 and you look at the cards in uh, traps in sets, you can see they have significantly powerful effects, especially noble traps. But the players, whether in TCG and OCG, generic traps, they're not being used. So something was needed to shake things up. And so, over time, they released a card called Destructive Daruma Karma Cannon. And we see the new card, the Black Goat Laughs. Now, while yes, these cards are extremely good, and we do see their usage in uh, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! today, and we do see them. However, their adoption rate isn't as high as, as uh, Infinite Impermanence. What is going on here, right? Infinite Impermanence has aged like fine wine, yet a card like this Destructive Daruma Cannon just fails to, to hit waves? The Black Goat Laughs, again, this was based on a card um, like Confiscation, for example, with being able to declare a card name, yet we don't see this card often. you got to take consideration there's loads of wonderful traps that have been released, Yet yeah, their usage pales in comparison to infinite impermanence, right? Still reigning supreme. What is going on? And that is when Karami realized it. Traps are just not strong enough. I don't like where this is going. So we need to go even further beyond. We need to go broken. We need to just go absolutely batshit insane. And that is when they had an epiphany and released the card known as Transaction Rollback. Now, this has been discussed uh, again at length by one of the Yu-Gi-Oh! former Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Konami designers, card designers. And we look at Transaction Rollback and it has the ability to copy any trap from the opponent in any trap, in the graveyard, and obviously in any trap, on in your graveyard. The point that now I need to make here is that you look at transaction rollback and it is indeed broken. It is indeed absolutely outrageous. But let's think about it from Konami's perspective. Before this card was released, traps have just not are not played in the modern game. Think about a card like... um. Waybridge, which in theory should work, which is, has the exact same effect as evenly matched. No one's playing it. How about Broken Line? Again, a card designed with the framework of infinite impermanence. No one's playing it. There's a lot of traps that have been released over the years since 2017, which have the framework of really good traps with really good effects. But no one is playing them. They're not adopted in mass. Yet with the release of Transaction Rollback, this is the first time that we have that Konami anyway has seen a card being used out and being adopted in mass. Now, is the effect questionable? Absolutely. But in Konami's eyes, finally, traps have been saved. But here's where we need to hit a bit of reality. And now here's where as a player and as as players of the game, and you and you and I both know, 
there's an issue with transaction rollback. It is too strong. It is way too powerful. And we have learned time and time again, whenever you have effects that copy other effects, not only do, do, does this destroy game balance, but it also means that designing cards in the future is going to be a problem. And now Konami has put themselves in a catch-22 situation. They wanted to make traps better in the future, and they have. But by creating transaction rollback, they've put them, they've painted themselves into a corner and they do not know what to do. Now, the consensus, obviously, from Konami right now is to leave transaction rollback into the game. Because at least traps are getting actual usage now and are getting mass adoption. And I think I understand where they're coming from. The excitement of players using transaction rollback, how it combos off, how what we can abuse with transaction rollback. The first genuine interest from the player base in both TCG and OCG using this card definitely I definitely, I definitely feels from Konami's side anyway, that finally traps are being used. But just because you've gotten traps to be used, that doesn't mean this is the correct way to get traps being used. Now, don't get it twisted. Des Destructive Daruma Cannon and other cards that I've mentioned in this video, sure, don't have a huge adoption rate as infinite impermanence. But they shouldn't be considered failures. And I think Konami has prematurely considered these cards failures because they haven't had uh, an adoption rate like infinite impermanence. They haven't just been in every format all the time, every time. Um, traps have just been left by the wayside. And it is a bit sad that uh, transaction rollback is what is essentially keeping traps afloat right now. It's very sad extremely so what is the solution well first of all i do believe that going forward transaction rollback definitely needs to get banned um regardless of the thought process of whether we need traps in the game or not traps should not be a trap should not be this powerful being able to copy uh, effects of any trap in the game is just a big no-no. Um, this is just a sign of severe problems to come and it is definitely going to limit card design space going forward. Um, this is something anyone can see. We as card card game enthusiasts who play Yu-Gi-Oh can see it. A, the, a former card designer from Konami can see it. We can all see it. It is just a problem waiting to happen. So what do they do? Well, first thing is first. I think what does need to happen is the steps that they've been taking this year. We remove the essence of generic negates. That's gone. Um, we print more cards like Daruma Cannon. Part of the issue why traps aren't being used is they don't have enough power. When we look at traps in modern Yu-Gi-Oh right now, apart from evenly matched, what card has that level of power? They're few and far between. There's only Daruma Cannon, and that's it. It is a problem. The more the traps just don't have enough power. And when I say power, it doesn't mean that we would like them to just be completely broken like rollback, but they need power in, in utility, power in going second, but power in just general usage. And I think that's all I've got to say about this matter. Let's enter the conclusion. So we're going to go to the overall conclusion. And as I conclude this video, there's something I just want to mention here that's extremely important. Konami has finally realized that the trap usage in Yu-Gi-Oh is dwindling and is completely in dire straits. And the argument is true, creating a card like Transaction Rollback does, yes, in the immediate future or immediate short term, 
increase the usage of traps. But what it does, what you, they fail to realize, just because you can copy other traps doesn't mean that you should. Okay? These are two different concepts, and copying effects is not the solution to get more traps to be used in Yu-Gi-Oh! Traps have to stand on their own merit, not by copying other cards. Copying effects is not the solution to get a mass adoption rate. What they need to do is, is the same thing they did, like, but with infinite impermanence. Add a new mechanic to traps. The reason why infinite impermanence works so well as it can be used as a normal trap to negate an effect, but you can also use it as a hand trap to also negate an effect. Something like Dominus Purge, for example, the Dominus series, can be used as a hand trap, okay, to stop adding a card, but you can also use it as a normal trap to stop adding a card. What needs to happen is that you need to give traps bonuses for being able to be used in different ways. Now, the Dominus cards that we've seen released this year is, I think, a very good start for how traps should be designed going forward, where they have extra effects. Sure, they, sure the Dominus cards have a restriction when you use them for the hand, but the fact that you can also still use them as normal traps as well is really good because just as a normal trap it is still useful and i think that to me is how traps need to be designed going forward they need to have multiple uses but they also need to function just as traps okay and they need to the the, the trap usage for them is just an extra benefit it needs to be seen as a benefit and not as a loss so overall what i'm saying is if traps are to succeed in Yu-Gi-Oh! and if Konami is to realize that the trap usage is not getting mass adopted, then design traps to be better. Give them a higher ceiling, more power, more diversity, more utility. And most importantly, give them a way, give traps a way out. Don't make spells too busted or too broken. Lower down the ceiling of spells. And I think spells in Yu-Gi-Oh have gotten way too out of hand and do way too much, okay? I think there's another issue that needs to definitely be addressed going forward. I think the ceiling of spells needs to be decreased, right? If you look at the Azamina uh, spells, for example, from Rage of the Abyss, they do way too much. They fusion summon, do whatever. And to me, that is a problem. Traps never have that much of abilities. It's either you depower spells or you bring, uh, or you bring traps to have the same power level as spells. And I think, to me, what needs to happen is traps need to have the same power level as spells have in Yu-Gi-Oh. And currently, traps are completely lacking in this department. With that being said, this is the end of this video, and uh, we'll be I'll be covering more topics as a Yu-Gi-Oh! Sensei with things like these. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My faith, right, is in your hands.